hey, you've clicked this video because you want to know the good and the bad about the living in Tampa Bay. Well, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but I want to give you the pros and the cons about living in our fantastic city. Christy, your favorite agent here in Tampa Bay. If you're thinking about making the move to the Tampa Bay area, give me a call because I work daily with families just like yours who are thinking about making the move to Tampa. I post new videos every Tuesdays and Thursdays, so make sure you hit that subscribe button so YouTube alerts you when I upload a new video. You're not gonna wanna miss it. My number is 813-523-3441. I'm celebrating today because the weather is cooler. October is my favorite time of year here in Tampa, and I love seeing all my neighbors' yards decorated for Halloween and enjoying watching all the football games. I will have to do a video of some of my neighbors' Halloween decorations here soon. They're really fun. We even have um, one of the neighbors uh, has a Beetlejuice out in their front yard. Don't get me wrong. You still have warm days here in Tampa, don't think it's all about wearing sweatshirts or jackets um, during October. But today, I wanna to talk to you about the pros and cons of moving to Tampa Bay. Everyone is always talking about how fantastic it is to move to Tampa. However, I want you to know the good and the bad and the truth about moving to Tampa. Because I'm a positive person, I wanna start with a pro for moving to Tampa. The winters. The winters is why my husband and I moved to Tampa. We really got tired of shoveling snow and dealing with the cold, wet winters. We just had a Hurricane Ian come through about two weeks ago, which brought us some cooler weather, which has been a blessing. Plan on having more shorts and short sleeves than winter clothes in Tampa. It always makes me laugh when I show homes here in Tampa and there's a coat closet right off the front door. We just really don't use our jackets much. Matter of fact, my son doesn't even own a jacket. He constantly wears hoodies all winter. The coldest month in Tampa is typically January. You might have to drag out your jacket for a couple of days or maybe a week, but that's really it. I always say Ocala, which is about an hour north of the suburbs here in Tampa, is the line for the colder temperatures in the winter months. From October to December, plan on still being able to wear your shorts and flip-flops. Nice thing about the fall is that the rainy season is pretty much over. During the time closer to spring, like February and March, plan on some cooler days, but really enjoy the low humidity. It's a great time of year to really enjoy everything Tampa Bay has to offer outdoors. The con of living in a Tampa are the bugs. Get used to all the strange looking insects and bugs that you can think of. They love the mild winters in Tampa. Cockroaches, spiders, um, big ones, frogs, mosquitoes. My least favorite are the fire ants. If you've only lived up north, you might not realize or have experienced fire ants before. They're a big nuisance. It makes it very hard to walk in the grass without your shoes on or wearing flip-flops. When they bite, it hurts. But don't be shocked if you see a cockroach or two in your home. It's almost a common thing. But just make sure when you move here, you have a quarterly pest company come out and spray your house. But a cockroach or two, yeah, it's kind of common. If you're going to spend any time in the backyard, you're going to want to have a screened in lanai. It, we also call it a bird cage here or a pool cage here. Mosquitoes are hungry in the mornings and the evenings and especially at dusk. I always wonder why so many people had these pool cages in their backyards when I first moved to Tampa. And I figured out really quickly one night why you need these pool cages. Even in cooler evenings, you'll get eaten alive. Another pro for Tampa Bay is all about the different types of communities. From the 55 plus communities that we have, everything from golf, tennis, pickleball, and the beautiful clubhouses uh, that you can enjoy all the events. We also have three communities in the Tampa Bay area that have a what we call a crystal clear lagoon. 
these communities have anywhere from a seven and a half to a 15 acre crystal clear lagoon to swim in. It's like a big swimming pool. There are plans for even more. So just so many unique communities, um, depending on what you're wanting or what you're looking to do here in the Tampa Bay area, enjoy doing. It's time for a con. Tampa, I don't really love cons, but your health insurance, your homeowner's insurance, and your car insurance is expensive. My husband and I, when we moved here from Atlanta, we were shocked at how much our health, our car, and our homeowner's insurance went up. And I am, I'm, I'm a really good driver. The homeowner's insurance is so expensive right now because insurance companies have had more than a billion dollars in underwriting loss in 2020 and again in 21. With premiums going up so much, they're still losing money in Florida. And because of this, they're just leaving the state of Florida, which is making it tough and expensive to get insurance. Not something to be scared of, but just something, or not even a panic over, just be something that you need to be aware of. Another pro in Tampa are the sports. Going to be a Bucks fan or tailgating, it's a ton of fun to be at the stadium, especially even if you're not a Tom Brady fan, just go to the stadium and watch him play. The best part or my favorite part is when they score a touchdown, the pirate ship at the stadium sends off the cannons down to celebrate the touchdown. It's a lot of fun. The stadium is in a great location just north of Tampa and across the street from the Bucks stadium is where the New York Yankees um, play during the spring training. They also have a great stadium to um, watch spring training in the game, so check it out. You can't think of Tampa without thinking of the Tampa Bay Lightning. In the last several years, they have been very successful. They play at the Amalia Center um, there in Tampa, and there's tons to do around Amalia, like restaurants, trolley rides, and bars. They even have an outside area to watch the game, where you can bring chairs and kind of tailgate, if you will, um, on and watch the big screens. The baseball team, the Tampa Bay Rays, actually play in St. Pete, and they have an indoor stadium close to downtown St. Pete. I encourage you to leave a little bit early, grab something to eat in downtown St. Pete, and then head over to the game. As I said, I'm a positive person, so I'm gonna give you another positive to Tampa, the salt life. Even though I live about 40 minutes from the Gulf, I can tell you how nice it is to be able to jump in my car and head over to the water. We have friends that invite us to ride on their boats on the weekends, and just to be able to do that any time of year is really priceless. Even if I like to head over to the beach in the evenings to see the sunsets. Living in Tampa also allows you to be close to Disney and Legoland and all the other attractions. You can get over for the day or stay at one of the resorts for a few days. Disney and Legoland gives you discounts to be a Florida to the Florida families. So make sure you look for that when you book your tickets. You can even be billed monthly for your yearly passes. If you plan on going over there to the parks many times a year, it might be more beneficial that way to you. Those passes also get you into the water parks as well for the summer months. Okay, there you have it, the pros and cons of moving to the Tampa Bay area. We live in a fantastic city and it's definitely worth checking out. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to help.